If you're tuning in to our service this evening, could I give you a very warm welcome, either on Facebook or on YouTube. We do pray that the Lord will bless us tonight as we once again gather around God's precious Word. We're delighted to have our good friend and sister, Natasha Ashison, with us tonight and her husband and family. We welcome them, and Natasha's going to sing for us just in a few moments' time. But we do pray that the Lord will meet with us again this evening around the wonderful message of the gospel. Now, before we do anything, we're going to bow in prayer, and we're going to commit our service to the Lord. Let's pray. Our loving Father in heaven, we thank Thee and we praise Thee once again for another gospel meeting. We thank Thee for the message of the gospel, that it's still the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. And we thank Thee, Lord, for those that You've saved in recent weeks. O oh God, how it thrills our soul that You're still saving precious, precious souls. And we pray tonight, Lord, as the message of the gospel goes out in song and in word, that You'd be pleased, Lord, to speak again. We think especially, Lord, of those listening in this evening, and they're still strangers to grace and to God. We pray, Lord, that You would speak to them. And, O oh God, that even ere this service goes out into eternity, that they would come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, bless all our sister congregations tonight. Bless everywhere where thy word is going forth. Bless your servants. Oh God, we pray that this might be a high day for the preaching of the gospel, when many will not only hear, but that they will come and put their faith and trust in the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. So be with us now. Come and bless us. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. If you have your Bible in front of you there, please turn to 1 John chapter 5 for our short Bible reading this evening. And as you're looking up the place, I just want to make a few announcements very, very quickly. Now, I'm not going to go over all the announcements I made this morning, but just a few announcements. This week, of course, as I emphasized this morning, we're having special seasons of prayer. Monday right through to Thursday of this week. Monday and Wednesday, we're meeting early in the morning at a quarter past seven. So do remember that early morning prayer meeting tomorrow morning. Get up out of bed early and let us seek the face of the Lord. And, and Wednesday morning as well. And then on Tuesday night and Thursday night this week at 8 p.m., we're having special prolonged times of prayer. Now, as I announced this morning, there's going to be no Bible study online on Tuesday night. Uh, but rather, we're going to meet at 8 o'clock on the Zoom, and we're going to have that prolonged time of prayer. So if you can join with us, and we would encourage as many people as possible to join with us on the prayer chain WhatsApp group, and the link will be going up there uh, mornings and the evenings of these special seasons of prayer. Please, if you haven't joined with us yet, please do so uh, this week, and let us really pray and hold on to the horns of the altar, that the Lord will send us a breath of revival. Remember, the service is next Lord's Day uh, at 11.30 in the morning, and then at 6.30 in the evening. And I'll be preaching, God willing, at both services. Grace Hill will be singing next Sunday morning, and our sister Amanda Reed, God willing, will be singing next Sunday evening. We do welcome you in to the service again, if you're joining on the social media, you're very, very welcome. And we pray that the Lord will bless us tonight around His precious Word. Let's read a few verses from 1 John chapter 5. I'm going to preach tonight on the wonderful subject of eternal life. And we read in verse 11 these wonderful words in 1 John 5, verse 11. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Amen. We'll end our reading there at verse 13, knowing the Lord will bless the reading of His precious Word again to our hearts uh, this evening. We're going to bow in a, in a word of prayer just before we come to God's Word, and we're going to seek the Lord's face again for His blessing upon 
the preaching of His Word. So let's bow in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank Thee and praise Thee for Your presence with us tonight. Indeed, Lord, we can testify, Lord, that we have known Thy presence over these past weeks and months. And, O oh God, we just pray again tonight that You would come and speak to hearts. We think of those, Lord, listening, still unsaved. O oh God, we pray that this will be the night that they will receive eternal life. We thank Thee, Lord, that Jesus alone is the giver. And we pray, Lord, now fill us with Thy Holy Spirit and help us, Lord, only to say those things that will be pleasing to Thee. And, Lord, we'll be very careful to give to Thee the praise, the glory, and every bit of the honor. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Please turn again to that portion of Scripture which we read earlier in 1 John chapter 5. Very simply, tonight, as I have announced, I want to speak this evening on the subject of eternal life. Now, I know in this 21st century, many do not believe in life after death. They tell us that the grave is the end, that once you die, you stop existing. But of course, when we turn to the precious Word of God, and the Bible is our only rule of faith and practice, the Word of God teaches clearly that the sinner can have eternal life. What a message we have for you this evening, and especially if you're listening tonight and you're not saved. I want you to listen very, very carefully. I believe that this message will encourage the saints of God, but I do pray that it will challenge those who are listening who are not saved. My friend, you need to receive Christ as your Savior in order to have eternal life. And we're going to see that just in a moment. I wonder, are you a possessor of everlasting life? First thing I want you to notice here from this passage of Scripture in 1 John chapter 5 is the promise of eternal life. God here is promising people everlasting life. Look what it says in verse 11. It says, God hath given to us eternal life. Now, who are these people who God is promising eternal life to? Well, we're going to find that out just in a moment. But the point I want to make here is this, and I pray if you're listening tonight and you're not saved, that as you read the Word of God this evening, that this truth will grip your heart and grip your soul. God here is promising eternal life. You can have eternal life. You can know before you die that you're going to heaven. That's what the Bible teaches us here, very simply, but very clearly and very dogmatically. My friend, it is possible and this is the wonderful truth that is brought out here, not only in this passage of Scripture, but as we're going to find out in other passages of Scripture as well. The, a vile sinner can know before they die that they're on their way to heaven. Oh, I pray that you will listen carefully this evening and that God's Word will grip your heart and that God's Word will grip your soul this evening. You can know doesn't matter what the atheist says, doesn't matter what the world says or what the agnostic says, doesn't matter what the unbeliever says, doesn't matter what the rejecter of the Bible says. Here in God's precious Word, we see clearly that men and women and young people and boys and girls can know that they have eternal life. And here we have a promise, a promise from God a promise from the divine Creator that sinners on earth can have eternal life. I want you to notice, secondly, and again I emphasize, I hope that, that you have the Bible open before you, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I say or what I think. It's what God says. It's what God thinks. It what, it's what God declares in His Holy Word. I want you to notice not only the promise of eternal life here, but I want you to notice the procuring of eternal life. In other words, how can I receive eternal life? How can I know that I'm going to heaven? 
Who does God promise eternal life to? Well, take a look carefully at this portion of Scripture. Take a look with me there at verse 11, because we have the answer to all these questions here in this text. Look what it says in verse 11. God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Look at verse 12, the beginning of it. He that hath the Son hath life. And then look at verse 13. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. God promises eternal life to all who have believed on His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as their, their own and personal Savior. Therefore, you procure eternal life, you receive eternal life, when you accept God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, into your heart and life as your own and personal Savior. You see, John here, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is writing to those who have trusted the Lord Jesus as their own and personal Savior. And he's coming here to speak the Word of God to them. And as he speaks the Word of God to them, he promises them eternal life. Notice here how the Bible links eternal life with those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, on the Son of God. Read carefully verse 13. Now, verse 11 teaches us that eternal life is only to be found in Christ. And let me emphasize that. Eternal life, everlasting life, cannot be gained outside of Jesus Christ. There's only one who can give eternal, everlasting life, and that is Jesus Christ. But look how John here, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, links eternal life with believing and trusting in Jesus Christ. He says here in verse 13, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. So these people have done something here. They have believed in the name of the Son of God. In other words, they have got saved. They have realized that they're the sinner, that they can't save themselves, that only God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, can save them, and they have trusted Christ alone for their salvation. And here the Bible declares that all those who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their own and personal Savior have everlasting life. Because the verse continues by saying this, "...unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God." How do you procure eternal life? How do you know that you're sure of heaven? How can, you, how can you be sure that when you die, you're going to glory? You know you can be sure. You procure, you receive everlasting life when you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. My friend, it's that simple. It's that simple. The Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. John 3, verse 36. John 3, verse 15 says, Whosoever believeth in him, that is Christ, should not perish, but have everlasting life. These are promises from the precious Word of God to all those who have put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus said in John 10, verse 10, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You see, that's the reason why the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world. That's the reason why He died upon the cross. That's the reason why He rose again from the dead, in order to give you and I everlasting life. And when He shed His precious blood upon the cross of Calvary, He purchased man's redemption. And thank God, all those who come and confess their sin to Him and repent of their sin and by faith trust Christ as their Savior, receive everlasting life. In 1 John 4 verse 9 it says, look what it says, "...in this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him." And the life spoken of there is eternal life. The Bible says, for as many as received Him, to them give He power to become the sons of God, even to them 
that believe on his name. Oh, my friend, I have a wonderful message for you tonight. It's a very simple message, but I'll tell you it's a glorious message. If you're listening this evening, you're still not saved, still not born again of the Spirit of God, praise God, this message is for you. You can be a recipient of everlasting life. You can know that you're saved. You can know that you're bound for heaven because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has accomplished on the cross of Calvary. Therefore, eternal life is procured when the sinner by faith receives Christ into their heart as their Savior and Lord. Everlasting life is found in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. I wonder, therefore, very simply, have you ever come and put your faith and trust in the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world? There's a lovely hymn in our hymn book, Under the burdens of guilt and care, many a spirit is grieving who in the joy of the Lord might share life everlasting receiving. Life, life, eternal life. Jesus alone is the giver. Life, life, abundant life. Glory to Jesus forever. Oh, I, I pray tonight, if you're listening and you're not saved, you're not a Christian, you've never put your faith and trust in the Lamb of God tonight as your Savior, that even this night you will come and by faith cast your all upon Him. Trust Him this evening. Only trust Him. Only trust Him. Only trust Him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. And He'll give you the gift of eternal life. Because that's why the Lord Jesus came to this earth that's why he was born of a virgin Mary. That's why he lived a perfect, sinless life. That's why he went to the cross and shed his precious blood. That's why he rose again. That's why he ever liveth, to make intercession for his people. He came because he loved us. We all know that verse so well, that God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, listen to it, should not perish, but what? But have everlasting life. My friend, I have everlasting life tonight. I'm going to heaven, not because I deserve it, not because there's anything good in me, but because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has accomplished on the cross for me. He has accomplished that for you as well. But in order for you to be a recipient of eternal life, you've got to come and bow the knee by faith at the cross and trust the Lord Jesus as your own and as your personal Savior. Now, there's something else I want to say here, and I want you to listen very carefully here. I want you to notice, thirdly, the prospect of those who do not have eternal life. Now, if a person has not eternal life, then they remain spiritually dead and can only face the prospect of eternal death. I want you to underline what it says in 1 John 5, verse 12. Look at what it says in our text. He that hath the Son hath life, but he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Now, if you don't have eternal life, what does that mean? Well, what is the text really teaching? The text is teaching this. If you haven't if you haven't got eternal life, then that means that you've got eternal death. It's either one or the other. If you haven't got eternal life, then you have eternal death. I want you to notice the contrast. Keep your hand in 1 John chapter 5 there, and turn over just for a moment to John chapter 3. Now, it's a very familiar portion of Scripture. But I want you to see the contrast in the verse. The verse here is emphasizing what we're seeking to preach tonight to you in this point. If you don't have eternal life, you have eternal death. If you don't go to heaven when you die, you go to hell. And this is what the Bible teaches. Look what it says in verse 36 of John 3. It says this, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. That's what we've been learning in 1 John chapter 5. But then it goes on to say, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, but he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath 
of God abideth on him. My friend, there's the contrast. The wages of sin is death, eternal death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, I'm not here tonight to make the gospel complicated. I'm here tonight to set forth the Word of God clearly and simply. The wonderful message of the gospel is this, that there is life for a look at the crucified one. There is life at this moment for thee. Then look, sinner, look unto him and be saved, unto him who was nailed to the tree. And if you do, you will receive everlasting life. But if you don't, if you reject Christ, and I say this lovingly and tenderly to you this evening, but I say it on the authority of the Bible, on the authority of the Scriptures, if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, then instead of receiving eternal life when you die, you'll receive eternal damnation, eternal punishment, eternal hell. That's what the Bible teaches very clearly. And I believe that's what the Bible is teaching here in 1 John chapter 5. It's emphasizing the promise of eternal life. It's emphasizing all those who believe in the Son of God have eternal life. But it's also emphasizing that if you're to jack Christ, then instead of receiving life, you'll receive the opposite of life, which is death forevermore, because the Bible tells us the soul that sinneth it shall die. So, in closing, in closing, you have a choice to make. My friend, if you're listening to this message tonight, if you've been listening to this service this evening, you have a choice to make. And I want to challenge you tonight either to receive Christ. Here's the choice. It's either life or death. It's either heaven or or hell. There's a text of Scripture over in Deuteronomy chapter 30. I want you to turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 30 just for a moment. And I want you to take a look at verse 19, because in Deuteronomy chapter 30, the people were presented with a choice. Let me read the verse to you. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing, therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. I have set before you tonight life and death. My friend, that's the choice that you have to make this evening. You have to make the choice between eternal life or eternal death, eternal salvation or eternal damnation. The Word of God is clear when it comes to this business of the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Oh, thank God tonight there is life for a look at the crucified one. And if you were to come this evening and put your faith and trust in the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, you would receive life, eternal life. You know, there's no greater blessing in this life than to know that you have eternal life. There's no greater blessing than to have the assurance on this earth before you die that you're going to heaven. I don't care what you own. I don't care what you possess. I don't care what blessings you have had up until this moment. If you're having the blessing of knowing that you're going to heaven, you're a poor man. You're a poor, you're a poor woman. You're a beggar. Jesus said, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? My friend, you have a soul tonight, an immortal soul, a soul that will live, exist for all eternity. Let me ask you a question. Where will your soul be five minutes after you take your last breath upon this earth? when they're lowering your coffin down into the grave, with your body in it, where will your soul be? It'll either have entered into eternal life or eternal death. Oh, I pray tonight that these truths will grip your heart and grip your soul, that you will realize this evening that death is hastening on. Over these past months, many, many have died in our land Many have died across our community. 
and many are still dying, and many more will die. My friend, what about you? Where will your soul be when you die? Death is coming for us all. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment, you need, you need to make your peace with God. You need to get right with God. I wonder, have you ever considered that? As you've thought about death and eternity, as you've thought about going out into the great eternity, have you ever thought about getting right with God. Well, my friend, you need to get right with God tonight. But thank God, and here's the wonderful message of the gospel, you can get right with God because His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, has died upon a cross. And upon that cross, He has shed His blood in order to redeem you from hell and from judgment to come. And if you trust Him and call upon Him and cry unto Him by faith to save you, he will prepare your soul for heaven. All the saints in the Bible, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, had the assurance of heaven before they died. The Apostle John says here that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Peter said that he was born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And Peter knew that he was on his way to heaven. Paul knew before he died, that he was going to heaven. He could say that he desired to depart to be with Christ, which was far better. David in the Old Testament knew that he was going to heaven because he knew that the shepherd would bring him safely through the valley of the shadow of death and that he would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Job said, for I know that my Redeemer liveth. My friend Abraham, Abraham looked for that city whose builder and maker was God, without exception. In the Old Testament, the New Testament, the saints of God knew that they had eternal life. Do you know that tonight? If you don't, make sure you know it. Before this night is out, make sure you know it. Before you die and go out into God's eternity, make sure tonight that you are a possessor of eternal life. May God bless His Word to your heart. Let us all pray. Father in heaven, we thank Thee and we praise Thee for the Word of God. We thank Thee, Lord, for this passage of Scripture. Oh God, how it thrills our hearts. We thank Thee that it blesses the saints of God. We thank Thee, Lord, for the assurance that You've given to us because of the sacrifice that Christ made upon the middle tree on Golgotha's brow. Oh God, I pray for those listening still not saved. Lord, that You would reach down, Lord, and pluck them as brands from the burning. Save them, Lord, and redeem them for time and for eternity. Oh God, we just commit this message to Thee, Lord, and we commit those who have heard it. And we pray, Lord, that while the voice of man will now be silent, that the still, small voice of God would work on in the heart. Lord, do it for Your glory. Save souls this night again. And we'll be careful, Lord, to give to Thee all the praise, the glory and every bit of the honor, for it's in Jesus' name we ask it, and for His glory alone. Amen. Amen. Amen.